Okay, I'm gonna demonstrate the uh, new installation for um, Market 7. It's been posted tonight. A uh, couple things I want to point out. So I went ahead and um, this is on a virtual machine. I deleted, you can see here in the roaming apps part, I deleted um, the previous installation when I had not installed it. So I can do a fresh install, show the changes. Um, first thing to show, so the 64-bit download, if I right-click on it, um, these uh, files have been signed. Um, so the uh, installs for the 64 and 32-bit versions will be signed. Uh, the binaries inside of them haven't been yet because I haven't incorporated the signing into my build process, but I can uh, sign the executable. So I'm going to run through what it looks like to run the program um, now that it's signed and what you can expect to see. So we'll go ahead and run it. Um, one of the things you should notice is that I don't see uh, the smart filter. Um, if I was to have ran it from my web browser, so here I have it, I downloaded it from um, my uh, OneDrive account. I have it here run it directly. So um, by signing the code, um, we should pretty much avoid having um, any of those kind of wonky warnings that tell you that uh, uh, the application is unsigned or any of those kind of things. You may still see your smart filter screen pop up depending on if you have it activated. Um, the way that that works is you earn reputation by the number of times you download the application. Um, since I'm signing both the 6.x and 7x um, installs, somewhere in the neighborhood of once the program has been downloaded between three and 4,000 times, um, those messages will go away. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see uh, that's, if that's how it works. So anyways, we'll go ahead and run through the installer. So I'll go ahead and uh, install. Again, this is all um, uh, user-based, so no administrative user to install it and run it. So I went ahead and installed the program. Uh, take a look at it here. So um, I changed the icon. The icon used to be a little bit more um, uh, transparent. Uh, a couple other things you'll notice. Uh, icons now work, they didn't before. Uh, okay, so the very first thing that's going to happen is going to boot you into the startup wizard if this is the first time you've installed MarkEdit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and walk through the startup wizard. Um, so one of the things that you probably saw last time here is um, MarkEdit's looking for specific fonts. It's looking for Unicode fonts. If it doesn't find them, it gives you this box that tells you no Unicode font was found. If you click on it, the new option is it will ask you if you'd like to download the font into MarkEdit. I'll tell it yes. So what's going on is um, .NET has the ability to create a private font collection. And so that's what's happening. The program downloads the really large zip file. So you've seen it go through. It was almost 500 megabytes. Downloads it to your computer, uncompresses it, um, which takes the, the, long, the most amount of time. Um, and it puts it into the um, applications uh, directory um, underneath the configs folder in a new folder called fonts. So we'll go ahead and tell it okay. You see the triangle go away because now the Nodu Sans font is on the system uh, recognized. So now we can go ahead and keep on moving. So we'll go through the process and finish. And program boots up. Um, I was because I clicked on the icon. I'm going to go ahead and close it and reopen the program. Um, you can see that it's using um, the no to font. And if we go to our preferences um, and go to language, uh, we can see that that font's been selected. Um, same thing in the editor, uh, it's been selected. Um, if you click on set font, you'll notice that the window looks different than it looked before. Um, I changed the font menu. Um, so that uh, we use a different one. Um, but in this case, we see that the sans font is selected, so we can go to um, our editor page and, and pick a uh, file. And we have one on the computer here, two on the computer here. 
um, then it loads up. And so we can uh, also change font from here. And you can see it's in no two sounds. Um, anyways, so you can pull this into the private font collection. Now, um, there is a small penalty involved. So when I start it up, uh, the first thing Mark Edit has to do is it reads the fonts directory. And so we'll go show you where this is at. If we go to the application data path and underneath configs, there's a fonts folder that gets created. In this case, you'll see there's 219 fonts that get dropped in here from currently. Um, those are all loaded into the application on startup. Uh, I thread the process so it shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't take a big hit, but there's a small startup penalty. And then internally the application um, checks to see if the font is locally installed or whether it's a uh, private font um, and it uh, handles them accordingly. So this should give users um, an opportunity to use um, a Unicode font since Windows 10 um, largely uh, miss doesn't include them any longer. Um, so this should give you the option to be able to um, download a font set um, and use it directly from the Liberty Mark Edit. So let's say you've already downloaded the, the um, alpha version and you would like to um, get the font. So you've done the update. Mark Edit's probably not going to pop up the startup wizard again. Shouldn't. Um, so you don't you don't uh, you don't have the font you'd like to be able to get it loaded um, in the uh, help underneath uh, troubleshooting options. There's a place where you can download the No Two Unicode fonts, and it will run the same process as was done in the startup wizard. It will download the No Two font pack into the um, application uh, and load them. Um, into uh, the private font collection and then once they've been loaded you can go into the uh, language settings and select the font that you'd like to use um, and, and then that'll be available to you. Um, so there are two ways now to be able to get at um, that data. Uh, a couple other things I wanted to highlight because there's been a lot of changes. Um, you check out the change log to see the full changes. Um, one of the changes made um, was to surface the clustering tools. So if you um, want to use them outside of the editor, um, you can put them on your uh, home screen. So the clustering tools. And so just like before, we have our tool set. This is kind of a lightweight open refine tool. Um, I, maybe at some, I've recorded a, an example, but maybe at some point I can do it again. Um, so that's there now um, and available. Uh, you'll also find it still in the Mark Editor under Tools and Clustering Tools, um, as well as uh, now from the Main Tools window, uh, Mark Tools, you'll find uh, the clustering data tools there too. So uh, ways to get at that uh, function has been um, surfaced. Uh, lots of other fixes along the way have been made. Um, some of them related to the theming, um, when the themes were present, uh, some of the forms weren't uh, um, weren't refreshing when data was added or not added, um, some updates to the Z39.50 client. Uh, anyways, take a look at the full log list um, to see how um, what kind of changes have been made. Um, but I wanted to highlight how um, the installation process um, was going to work. Uh, and, and how that font handling gets taken care of. Um, so I think uh, that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to show.